Hi, this is Chef Sandy from Bronyville Podcast, and you are listening to the NBS Show. Welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 32. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Hi, Norman. How are you, Daniel? A bit under the weather, cold's going around KL. So, yeah. Oh. Up. oh my, I hope you don't get ill. Nah, I shouldn't. I mean, even if I do, I've got ponies. Okay, awesome. And joining us today is Chef Sandy. Hello, hello. Hello, Sandy. How are you? I'm doing alright. It's a nice chilly day here in uh, Dallas, Texas. Oh, cool. At least it's not that hot for you, right? Oh, goodness, no. It's like 55 Fahrenheit. It's not very hot at all. Oh, <laughs> I need to bust out the converter. We're talking about 90 Fahrenheit here in the afternoon, which is roasting. Oh, yeah. I need to find a converter because I'm not good with numbers and conversion. Well, neither am I, but there's a foreign student in my class who prefers Fahrenheit. So when she asks for the temperature, we switch all our phones to Fahrenheit so that she can understand it. <laughs> Okay, well, anyway, um, before we start, we have to ask you the four important questions. And the first question is, who's your favorite pony? Rainbow Dash. She is, uh, was the first character I really, really liked and uh, stuck with her. Had there been any pony that crept up to took over her place? Uh, I would say maybe Rarity. I have that feeling too, because Rarity sometimes can be really cool if she wants to. They're both very good ponies in their own right. Indeed. And the second question is, what's your favorite episode? Split it between uh, Read It and Weep and uh, Sonic Rainbow. Well, they're both Dash episodes, and they're both very good in their own right. I really like uh, Read It and Weep for the uh, Indiana Jones-style adventure. Oh, yeah. That's background going on with the, her reading the book, and Sonic Rainbow was just Dash being awesome. I showed my aunt Sonic Rainbow, and she said that episode was really awesome. And read it and weep. It's actually something that came to me. It hit me suddenly just earlier this year that I was reading Brony's meme base and I saw some picture. And actually, suddenly struck me that read it and weep is actually the story of how some people become Brony's. That's interesting. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, they did it. And then hey, they think it's pretty cool after they give it a shot. Wow, who who knew? I don't know. People overanalyze MLP a lot. Like even in the Cantlot wedding. Pony toys in a My Little Pony. <laughs> yep. Ponyception. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, um, you know, it's not too far out there when you talk about, you know, us humans, we've got little action figures, so they would make little toys that look like them. True. Yeah, he, he does have no point. I have to agree. Okay, my third question is, how did you become a fan of the show? Um, I was one of the uh, early fans uh, back in the day on 4chan's comic and cartoon board. Uh, back in the day, it was new and underground, and I started watching about episode 8 or 9. Not to sound like a hipster or anything, but it was very early when it became a thing, and have watched it all the way through. So it's kind of interesting to see how the community has evolved and mutated over the last couple of years. I still can't believe that it's on 4chan, like, of all places. I don't think it yeah. can exactly be traced to 4chan. It's probably one of the more significant routes. That's where I found it. And uh, 4chan and Reddit, they all have very lo- very wide reach among the uh, demographics that are currently fans of the show. You know, the 15 to 25-year-old male. And so, I mean, it makes it makes a lot of sense that it got so big so fast. Hmm, true, true. And my fourth question is, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? <laughs> well, most of my friends uh, have converted to liking the show. Hmm. And those that don't, I just sort of let them be. My family think it's just me being uh, just me, being me and uh, don't really mind. My sister likes it. My mom thinks it's cute. My dad just sort of like, eh, whatever. Well, we have the same thing, except my sister don't like the show. Oh. Sister doesn't? No, she don't. Oh, okay. I thought she was kind of, like, okay with it. Uh, she's, like, if it doesn't reach her, she's fine. Oh, okay. Mm. Well, my sister is old enough to have had the original toys. Mm. So, you know, I'm, I'm 29, she's 25. And so she has, like, some of the originals. And so... 
liking the new stuff isn't hard for her. She's like, oh, it's, it's more ponies, and they're cute. But she has one of the original Firefly plush. Oh, my. Wow. I need to look up that. How I wonder how does it look for the earlier versions of the plush. So, anyway, let's move on to our next topic. And our next topic is news time. So, in today's news time, season 3 is out in November. Yay! Uh, after five months of waiting, we finally have a release date for season 3. The new season is set to be released in November, and a specific date has not been announced. But I speculate that it will be aired on Saturday. Links can be found in the show notes. So... <laughs> What do you guys think? Uh, well, I mean, it had to have been before December, because December 4th, the uh, they're releasing a DVD in the US that has the first two episodes of Season 3 on it. So it'll probably be, and I'm just guessing here, you look at my calendar, probably either November 10th or 17th will be the start of the season. You heard mm. it from Daddy himself? It's nothing concrete, man. Come on. But still, it's like an expert speculation. Well, it does seem to be a good date to release it. Yeah. I mean, I you wouldn't know. be able to guess. Oh, come on. It's easy. When they say in November, when do you think it's going to come out? Well, they okay, only well. have three weeks in which it could start. The 3rd, the 10th, or the 17th. So. True. And if you really want to be, in a, be a pro, why don't you look at what's going on in the hub and look at what show is going to end soon? Not really. But anyway, let's move on to the next news. Daniel, why don't you take this one? Yes, please. And the My Little Pony comic will come out November 28th. In a recent tweet, Andy Price, the artist for the comic, announced that issue one of the MLP comic will launch on October 28th. And if you haven't pre-ordered the comic, now is your chance to do so. You can find links and a picture of the tweet in the show notes. So, the new episode will be out in November. The comic is postponed till November 28th. Hmm. Yeah. Awesome. This means something. It means they'll have a comic in November. Indeed. Wait, what? Andy's a pretty cool guy. Um, he, uh, we had him on the show here a little bit ago, and I'm really looking forward to the comic because it's being handled by IDW, and they do a lot of uh, like 80s style reboots. They did Transformers for a little bit. They did, they're doing Ghostbusters. Uh, I think they do a lot of stuff for Hasbro, even G.I. Joe, if I remember right. Yeah, G.I. Joe. And so they handle them really well. Oh, I'm in love with the cover art. Oh, yeah. They have a very, very cute style. Yeah, I mean, I, if I get my hands on one, I'm just going to frame it in my room. <laughs> How would you read the comic? I'll read it first. <laughs> and then frame it? Yeah. Oh, my. Okay. I'm weird like that. But I did ask Andy on Twitter about the comic, if, well, well for us, that we live in Asia. Um, he said that we can get it online. Well, I hope we can get it online because I really want to read it. <laughs> we want. Oh, yeah. I think your best bet, you might maybe ordering from Australia. I really don't know. I, I don't know what the price for post between uh, America and Malaysia for you, all, for you guys. It was pretty high on USPS. <laughs> but then we do have, we actually have one of our friends who um, can't make it to the show tonight. She's in Australia, so maybe she might be able to help us out. Yeah, she'll be our pony that brings us good stuff. Like she always does because Australia has so much more merch than here. Yeah, true. Well, Singapore has some good merch. Not as much as Australia. Indeed. But they have Target there. True. And I had to go to the Target one week before I became a brony. (laughs) Uh, I pity you, man. I pity you. Yeah. Anyway, on to the last news. More brony music coming to Rock Band soon. If you're a brony and you love to play rock band, we have a great news for you. The company, Chart Topper's Ordering, is going to add more brony music to Rock Band Network. The songs that are going to be added are Eurobeat Bronies, Discord, Dash and the Living Tombstone Good Girl, Eurobeat, Luna, and Jeff Burgess. Is that right? I think so. I think it's Burgess. Okay, Jeff Burgess, Trixie. And links can be found in the show notes. Chef, do you play rock band? Uh, I do occasionally. Um, it's definitely like a convention thing where if they have a game room set up and they have people playing, I will totally give it a try. Oh, cool. Do you own the set yourself? Yes, actually. I have it for the 360. But, you know, it's it's much more fun to play with friends. Definitely. Yes, I know the feeling. It's a play-when-you're-drunk kind of game. <laughs> yeah, try to sing. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I do that with karaoke is magic. Uh, sorry, my little karaoke singing is magic. Keep saying it wrong. Hmm. I should check that out. Obviously, I have a mic set up. The, PC. If I remember right, the game for the rock band game, the song haven't come out yet, but I think the Discord Tombstone mix is already out on rock band. Have you purchased that? It works something like Xbox Live, right? You purchase songs off the store or something? Yeah, it's DLC. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like a dollar or two. But I was referring to the karaoke, the singing is magic thing that you were talking about. Yeah, well, that's really my, great stuff. We'll probably link it in the show notes, but I've played it and wow, it's kind of fun. I was into the whole karaoke. I'm into music games, even though I'm really not good at them. But um, since, well, my, my strongest instrument is my voice, although I play the piano and some other instruments. So basically, when, uh, which is the engine that runs uh, my, my little karaoke, I basically jumped on it. I've been into Ultra Star for a while already, so it was nothing new. But yeah, how it's cool. Okay, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is guest time. And in today's guest, like we said, we have Chef Sandy. Chef, would you like to introduce yourself to people who might not know you? All right. I am uh, Chef Sandy. One half of Bronyville Pod. Been a brony for most of these fandoms existence. And I uh, believe that AC and I were also the ones that first got this whole pony podcast thing rolling. Indeed. You're our inspiration. Yes. And I'm sure I've told the story on Bronyville a couple times, but the whole reason we started doing this show is that we had to get the pony out of our system to quit annoying our friends who were just talking about it all the time. You know, like, if we talk about it on the internet and talk to each other, you know, we'll just do a couple shows, get it out of our system, and we'll be done with it. It's just a fad. And uh, I think we're recording episode 75 today. Wow. So, so still have ponies in your system? <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it's still in the system. Ponies are coming from inside the bones or something. I don't know. Well, this go my first question. <laughs> yeah, well, congratulations on 75 episodes. That's amazing. Thank you. Oh. So, uh, ask away. Okay, well, my first question is, how did you get started? But that's already been answered. Yeah, it's just one of those things that uh, AC and I had been friends for a long time. We've known each other for probably five or six years. And uh, we both do podcasts as a hobby. And so we were like, hey, it's a new opportunity, a new, a new option, a new opportunity for me, an option for him to get back in the game. And so we just jumped on it. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. Interesting. How did you know Apple Cider? Apple Cider and I have known each other for a long time. Uh, back in the day, he was actually the person that inspired me to start doing podcasts. And he did some shows for a while. And we got we interacted and said hi. We were we didn't really regard ourselves as like rivals or anything because we were doing separate things. We were both doing podcasts, and so we didn't really know each other that well. But then we met at a couple of events, hung out, got to know each other a little better, and we we're just like, all right, cool, yeah. We became like real acquaintance, like friends. And then once we finally decided to do Bronyville, we've become real good friends. So it's just like we met. Oh, see, back in 2007, I think. 2007? Oh, that's a pretty long while ago. Yeah. So, it's just similar interests and similar talents, and it all works together. I remember your first episode that you had a couple of guests. Um, were, Are they still on, or are they still a fan of the show? Like on the very, very first episode of Burning Yeah, Yeah, episode number one. Uh, let's see. They had, uh, yeah, I think, I have to look it up. <laughs> Ooh, it's been a while, though. Sorry, I it, brought up. It has it has been a while. Um, Bernieville episode one. Let's see what the show notes say, because uh, it has been a very long time. And I think the show Let's format has changed a lot. <laughs> well, if you can remember, and Keb. Let's see, I'm I'm sure they are. I don't actually. I believe they're both. One of them, I think, is on the west coast of the U.S. and has part of a uh, meetup group they run. One is in Atlanta that runs their meetup group out there, because that's where uh, AC was originally from. Oh, well, awesome. So, did you ever imagine that your show will be really popular? Uh, you know, for podcasts, it's really hard to uh, to gauge how popular one one really is. I mean, yeah, you can go by uh, your, your metrics, your downloads, and all like that, but it, it's one of those things that you... When it comes to podcasting, you can't really aim at being popular. You be popular by your own virtue, as it were. 
Oh. You know, because we, we, we started doing Bronyville just to to talk about ponies, to stop annoying our friends and have a directed outlet that would uh, let people discuss the show with us, be like the emails and the feedback and all that, and get that energy directed into something that, well, if people want to listen to it, they can. <laughs> and a lot, a lot of time has passed, obviously, and... You know, it's like the early days approaching Equestria Daily going, oh, man, Equestria Daily. So this, though, is this, this wizard on his throne of bones. You can't talk to him. Now he's just a good friend. Oh, yeah, I have him on Skype. Blah, 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 blah. We, talk to, we talk to each other every week. Blah, blah, blah. I yeah, can't yeah, imagine. It, that's totally how it is. And uh, it, it's just funny to see how that's evolved over time, you know, because the... Uh, the guys like Quester Daily are all really cool people, and I think a lot of a lot of it is that people get too uh, too intimidated. Like, oh, they run this website; they must be this unapproachable golden god. Nah, they're they're just fans, like they're just a lot really really dedicated to what they do. True. Yeah. I I find it that if we want to bother, let's say Seth, like I want him as a guest on the show. Like, oh, I don't think so. He might be interested because he's busy doing stuff. I I see it as that. Because bronies tend to be busy people. Yeah, but it doesn't hurt to try and ask. That's how I got you. <laughs> yep. So, and, and I think that a lot of people, I mean, you should you should give it a shot. Ask him and be like, hey, would you like to come on sometime? Because, you know, he's a busy, busy guy. And Equestria Daily is kind of like a full-time job for him. But uh, you, should, you should give it a chance. And uh, see, he can probably slot you in one Saturday. True. Should try. Should try to get Steph one day. Yeah, thanks yeah. for the advice. You know, a lot of a lot of people in the community, you know, they are just they're just fans too, and you know, I think it's really cool, and I'm really glad you guys asked me to come on the show because I mean, hey, that's really cool that people think that I'm somehow noteworthy enough to uh, be a guest on a show. So, you know, I appreciate that. Well, no <laughs> problem because we we I how say I personally think you're awesome. So is apple cider, but well, it's hard to get cider on because I don't have him on Twitter. Well, actually, uh, I do, but he doesn't um, watch me back, so it's kind of hard to DM him. <laughs> well, I shall fix that later on. Yep. I mean, it's the whole exchange of things. Like, I remember on Bronyville when you first mentioned our podcast, and uh, Norman and just rang me up straight away and like, Daniel, 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 <laughs> we're on Bronyville! I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, like, I know, I know who you guys are. Oh, my gosh. Uh, that yeah, blew my that mind. That tweet that I sent at night. You were at my house, right, during that time? No, it wasn't one week before that, but I, I was just like, uh, this is a test tweet. Uh, hello, Ooh. everybody. You were at my house, seriously. Green, my memory is that bad. Oh, boy. Like, <laughs> mm. No, so, we were on the phone. Okay. Well, I remember it differently, you remember it differently, but it happened. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, how does your show operate? The way the show works is actually very similar to yours. Um, I think a bit of a chicken, chicken and the egg, which one came first. But um, a structured show is, I think, ideal for the type of show that we do. Um, basically, it starts out, you know, we have usual disclaimers. We have the intro to the guests, sponsors, news, fan fiction, topic, episode discussions, emails, five-star iTunes, then a cool thing. And this is the basic skeleton of every single episode, that it, it applies consistency to what we do and puts everything in a very nice, neat package for anybody to come back and be like, what were they talking about that episode? They can come back and find it in a very simple way. And, and you guys do it very similarly. So, yeah, true. That's, that's cool. Um, I have to apologize because we kind of stole your format. Oh, no, that's perfectly fine. I mean... and. It's a very good format, and uh, it makes it very easy for people to come back and see what the show is doing when they have for- show notes formatted like this. That's true. Like I find it easy because I listen to a lot of podcasts, and some of them don't. Well, how do I put this? Their formats are kind of strange. One minute here, the other minute there, and well, they don't really list out what they have in the news and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But those are other shows. But they're entertaining. That's why I keep listening to them. Like a one-off listen kind of thing. Oh, yeah. I think also, um, I I think a lot of it, having a consistent show, does help your your listener base. 
in a way, because they can kind of count on the same sort of show each week or each however frequently you do it, because it's like, all right, I, I haven't paid any attention to Equestria Daily or I haven't paid any attention to Derpy Who's News, so I'm going to listen to this, and they're going to talk about some of the news that happened this week. You know, they're going to have a guest. They're going to talk about some fan fiction. That's you true. Know, it, yeah. It's consistency, even outside of times when there's not, like, an episode to discuss. Yes, yeah, true. Like, no episode, no problem. We'll fill it with something. We'll think of something. Don't worry. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, I, I do think that, uh, like, podcasts and, sub- and communities like that have helped keep some of the community cohesion in between the season gaps. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot sure. of people are getting kind of, like, ticked off because suddenly there's no content. I have a friend who just finished watching season two and he asked me, where's the rest of it? I can't find it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh boy, you have to wait, my friend. He's while 12, waiting, I didn't want to like break his heart or something. You know, while waiting, you should listen to this guy. He plays awesome music. I gave him like links to Bronyville, to MBS show, to Friendship is Witchcraft. Uh, hope he enjoys it. Yeah, he does. Hey, it's certainly uh, that's a fun show. Indeed. So, Daniel, got any questions? Oh yes. Um, actually, just before I start with this, I just want to tell you, uh, Chef Sandy, that. Bronyville has been the inspiration behind the podcast that I run. Actually, before I joined the MBS show, when Norman started it, I wasn't around in uh, the Malaysian Brony community. But then um, I actually ran my own podcast, and that was kind of like a strike of inspiration. I was walking through the car park in my university, just listening to Bronyville, and I was like, I could totally do this for my university. And it's a similar format. I read the news from the portal, and then I just dish it out to everyone. And I have to credit you guys. You guys are the biggest inspiration that I had to start my own podcast. That's cool to hear. I really like hearing that because doing podcasting is the most democratic form of media, in my opinion. You know, anybody can grab a mic and start talking and uh, put it out there, you know? And if you're an interesting individual that may not be, you know, you don't get to go on the news, you don't get to go on the media, but you can certainly put your voice out there on on the internet with a podcast. So I think that's really cool that you started well, basically, the inspiration came from you guys, so thank you very much for that. You're welcome. When I found out about the MBS show, I was like, they was, we were hosting on SoundCloud before we reached iTunes. Oh, so no. when I joined, I was like, we got to push things up. I'm going to put you guys on iTunes. Actually, the whole problem was SoundCloud has a limit. If you want to have a longer play count, you need to join. And one show ran for about an hour long. And I don't think SoundCloud expected me to do that. You never know what you got in you until you try. Indeed. Because uh, I remember when I first downloaded my first episode of Bronyville, I looked at it, 40 minutes, and I was like, I'm not going to sit through this. I'm definitely not going to sit through 40 minutes with some guys talking. <laughs> now I was wrong. <laughs> oh, boy. As soon as I saw the 40 minutes, I had an audible TLDR in my head. Oh, yeah. I, I do understand, because there are some episodes of ours where we get really, really, really long-winded. Or it's... Uh, it's not really that. It's actually because... There's no other show in the world that I know or knew of at that particular time that could hold my attention for 40 whole minutes. Mm-hmm. So that's what proved me wrong. The uh, I mean, we have a, one episode on here that's uh, two and a half hours long. <laughs> I remember that one. Oh boy, did I sit down for a long time? Actually, I even remember the big long. Was it 12 hour live stream? <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> was amazing that stuff. Yeah. Were you See, dead live for the no, whole I thing? Wasn't. This was just about. One week after I became a brony and I start looking around, and I'm like, they're doing a 12-hour show. This might be like... I, because when you see something new like this, is like maybe it's something they do on a weekly basis. Well, you probably heard it here first, but we're probably going to do another uh, marathon show Ooh. come here uh, once, season, once we have a date for season three. Awesome. Might try and join. We'll definitely join. So, Daniel, your question, seriously. Yeah, yeah, of course. Sorry, I just had to do that because I needed to get that out. So, my first one would be, I love your OC. So, how did your cutie mark come up? All right. Well, let's see, I'm I'm good at making up characters. Just needed a avatar to represent myself in the community. It's like, all right, look, you know, everybody is a Pegasus. Everybody's unicorn. I'm gonna be an Earth pony. I'm gonna I'm gonna buck the trend. And Sandy, I was like, all right, yellow coat. What is he gonna be? He'll be a chef. All right, what's he gonna be? Mark gonna be? It's just it's just a matter of like, all right, it'll be this. Okay, it'll be this and this and this and this and this. And then I kind of slapped it all together and then I looked at it. I was like, all right, that's pretty cool. And he has sort of the, he has the same sort of haircut as, like, caramel, but he has the tail tied with the bow, sort of like a little, not with a bow, but like a little tie, like Applejack. Um, his cutie mark is 
got cactus with a little chef's hat on it. It's silly and cute. And his cutie mark and his special talent is the cultivation of edible cactus. Because the character's backstory is that he grew up in a uh, arid region, like the Badlands, Appaloosa, that kind of area. And apple trees don't really grow that well, not soil, but cactus sure does. And cactus pads and prickly pear fruit are all perfectly edible and taste decently well if you prepare them right. So it, it gave it gave Sandy a bit of a unique talent and uh, also something very grounded in reality. It's like, he grows cactus. Why? Because he lived in an area with really crappy soil, and this is what we grow. And it's like, hey, we can eat this. This is fine. All right, so, so my second question is, given that friendship is magic, probably never existed, would your nickname still be Chef Sandy? No. Because definitely Tim inspired. Yeah, Sandy is definitely a friendship magic inspired character. Everybody has to have a character to represent themselves, and this is this is mine for ponies. Sandy is just the character. It's a character I'm definitely attached to because I mean, it's just happy-go-lucky sort of you know sort of guy. Mm, okay, I know this sounds a little weird if you if I ask this, but do you cook much? Yeah, actually, I do. And my dad was also a chef for a long time. You know, I would help in the kitchen, so it's just something I've done most of my life. As a, as a hobby or uh, otherwise. Because when I was younger, my dad at our church, he was the cook. And every Wednesday night, he would prepare a meal for 150 to 200 people. Oh, my. And wow. so I would help him out. And it was definitely a family thing. You know, all of us would prepare big servings of everything. That's kind of where I learned a lot of my cooking stuff. Awesome. And, of course, cook, cooking for large amounts of people is definitely different from cooking for myself. But still... <laughs> My dad did that for about 10 years, and well, that's 10 years of my life. That's an, that's an interesting backstory, because people don't usually name their characters after what they are, since everyone's just trying to get away from real life during Friendship's Magic. <laughs> I think to make a character your own, you really need to ground it in something about you. You know, it has to have an aspect of you in it. Not th- just my opinion, but, you know, it's like this is something that I've done, I can relate to, it makes it's part of my character, it's part of that character. I fell in love with Pinkie Pie for that reason because I'm a balloon decorator with a wedding house. And uh, that's how I actually, when I saw a cutie mark, I'm like, oh, cutie mark, her talent is balloons. That's me. Funny enough, her talent is not making balloons. It is not, yeah. (laughs) But before I watched the show, I actually, before I watched uh, one of the episodes to try it out, I went over to the website and looked at about the characters page. That's where I saw it. So um, another question is, um, the name Bronyville for a podcast is a really awesome name. So where did that name come from? Honestly, it spawned out of the whole, okay, what are we called? We're called Bronies. All right, what's the town? Ponyville. Okay, bam, there you go. Unfortunately, at the time, there was other, there was a, a Minecraft server and a Second Life sim, which had taken on the name. And I wouldn't say thankfully, because seeing Creative Endeavor fail is never fun. But both of those have passed on. And so Bronyville as the podcast has endured the name just sort of is a portmanteau of Brony and Ponyville. Oh, okay. So were there any other like drafted names that didn't make it that y'all thought? Not really, actually. We just were like, we're going to call it this. And we're like, okay. And it was done. It was actually really quite simple. It really all fell together in a very concrete way that, you know, everybody, we were on the same page and we just were like, all right, we're going to do this and just, it kind of fell together. I feel kind of bad that there's not some sort of amazing epic tale of awesome that... Uh, <laughs> no, it's cool, it's cool. It's, right. it's, simple, like, it's like, no, simple, simple. It's, it's like, we're these guys that do this as a hobby, and we decided to do a pony show. We called it this, and it was real simple and all worked together. Yeah, the way yeah, I... I love name, it when I hear stories when this, like, it suddenly falls together so perfectly. Uh, the way I name our show is, like, I was a part of this Facebook group called the Malaysian Brony Society, and, like, huh, the MBS, like, that's awesome, like, okay, the MBS, and then, like, I wanted to call it the MBS podcast, but during that time, I don't know how to upload stuff to iTunes, so it won't be right to call ourselves a podcast, so what could we add, what could we add, yes, 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 show, show would be awesome, so we call ourselves the MBS show, and, like, all right, let's do this, and a few Google search later, the MBS show is actually the Marina Bay Sands show. (laughs) It's a thing in Singapore where they host light shows and whatnot, but like, and, uh, huh. Oh, yes. Like, oh, my. 
I didn't see that coming. Oh well. But still, we did well. Yeah, actually now I realise there's about 30 episodes in and now only I'm learning about this story. Yeah, you never ask. Yeah, I, I never did ask. So anyway, um, my question is, how did you find your guests? And is it easy to get them on the show? Basically, we just ask. Uh, we're like, hey, you know, the, these people, they're creative. They, they seem to be nice people. Let's talk to them. Let's say, hey, you know, would you like to come on the show? And nine times out of ten, they're like, oh, sure. Because the average person loves to be interviewed. And when artists loves to talk about their art, um, musicians love to talk about their methodology. People that do other shows, people that do like Fringe of Witchcraft like to talk about the steps that they take. You know, so it's just a matter of emailing them and saying, hey, would you like to come on our show? Because we see the people that get posted on Equestria Daily. We see the people that get posted on Derpy Who's News. And if we think that the person is interesting, we just drop them an email, drop them a Twitter a, a Twitter message, hmm. um, and just flat out ask. Well, just a quick question. Among those methods, which one has been the most effective for you all? Just flat emailing them or contacting them via like DeviantArt. My next question is, how do you find time to read fan fiction? Well, I'm, I'm a busy guy, but I'm not that busy. It's certainly, uh, it is definitely a leisure time activity, because I'm not always playing visit games or anything like that in the evenings. Just going to fan fiction and being like, hey, I'm going to take a look at this. And if it's good, I read it. And if it's not good, I get a couple of chapters in and I'm like, this is garbage. And oh. Stop. I mean, it is challenging, though, to find a story every week to talk about in terms of the uh, like the fan fiction segment we do on uh, Burnieville. Yeah, I noticed. I, not- I noticed it declining slowly because, well, it's not easy to read a fan fiction, especially a one-off kind of story. So, um, how do you read your fan fiction? Is it on a in front of the PC or on a tablet or whatnot? Oh, I just read it off the PC. Oh, okay. Got a nice big monitor and can scroll right through it. Oh, okay. Because the way I do it is I load it up to an iPad and read it before you go to bed. Yeah, that is, that is a good way to do it. Um, sometimes on road trips, uh, huh. where I'm not driving, obviously, <laughs> um, I load up a bunch of them digital reader format and read them on my phone. I've got a iPhone 4. Oh, yeah. Same with, the re- with the good retina display. Ooh, 4S. So, yeah, the 4S. And uh, so I just, I can read in the car. I, I'm I'm luckily one of those people that doesn't get, like, motion sickness while reading in the car. When may you guys go live? We go live every Saturday. And this, let me put some asterisks up there. on. We go live at noon Pacific time on Saturdays, normally. And we announce it on Bronyville, at Bronyville, on our Twitter account when we're going live. And if you get in the channel before the announcement, we do a bit of a pre-show where we just kind of, you know, shoot the breeze and, and chit-chat with people and chit-chat with our guests and uh, talk to people in the chat that or you know, that show up every week. A very dedicated contingent of people that are in there and doing art occasionally, just enjoying the live show. Oh, awesome. So what made you decide to go live instead of a recorded show, uh, sorry, a, a recorded format like us? You know, it was just a matter of other people were doing it and we were like, we could do that. And so we did. <laughs> it, it's one of those things. It's like, we could do that. Why aren't we? Oh, okay. Okay. I do want to sound like... We have a, a solid enough internet connection to do it and the equipment to do it. So I don't want to sound like a copycat or something, but we've been thinking about going live. But as you can hear, we derp a lot. So <laughs> This is one of the smoothest episodes we've ever had. But previous episodes, it's like you, we have to cut and retake about, I don't know, every five minutes. <laughs> Indeed. You know, it's one of those things that practice makes perfect, and a live show, you know, gets you some immediate feedback, but you can always go back and edit it, because if you do a live show, yeah, people can listen to it, and they'll give you feedback and listen to it live, but then there's a lot of people that can't, because of, you know, when you record, time zones, whatever, and so they can download the completed and edited, you know, MBS show, and they aren't aware that you do it live. There's the live people that are just like it's like their special thing to and they come and listen every jokes. week, and they the, some people listen to it twice because they listen to the live show and then listen to the to the yeah. recording later in the week. I did that when I was uh, there for your live show, and to hear you say my name live, that was pretty awesome. And again during recording, <laughs> yeah, uh, where I got called Sergeant Pinky. <laughs> uh, it's Saint Pinky, not Sergeant. 
tells um tell Poseidon to keep calling him Sergeant. I no! like it. <laughs> <laughs> Say it's Say Pinky. It's not Sergeant Pinky. I'm not in the army. Oh, okay. Saint Pinky. Yeah. Try to forget it. Even before I was a brony. <laughs> okay. Anyway, my last question is: Um, I heard you like to play fighting games. So, what is your favorite fighting game series? I really enjoy the uh, Marvel vs. Capcom series. Um, I've been playing the Versus series. No, I'm not like anywhere near competitive level. I play for fun and. uh I, I have enough going on that I don't have the time to devote, like, hours and hours a day to play competitively. But I, I do play for fun, and I've been playing the Versus series ever since, you know, it was like... X-Men vs. Street Fighter? X-Men vs. Street Fighter. I remember that. That was the first Versus series that I really enjoyed. Like, my mind was blown when I saw it. Well, most of the arcades that, back when they still existed, had it, and I could play pretty well. Uh, Scambit and Storm was my, my combo. Oh. This was well before, you know, tier lists and all this other stuff. You just played the characters that you liked and uh, had fun with it. But it was a lot of fun. And then playing Marvel vs. Capcom, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Oh, yeah. You know, I play all those. But I've also played Street Fighter since Street Fighter 2. And, uh, like, Soul Calibur, oh. back when it was Soul Edge. That that, had... that name kind of confused me. Like, Soul Edge and then Soul Calibur. Like, what? Why? Is it a Japanese-American thing where they change the names for no apparent reason? Yeah, well, like, in America, like, Soul Edge was the original name, but it's called Soul Blade in the U.S. <laughs> I don't know why. But uh... it was the original arcade. I played that one. I've played iterations of that game as well over the course of time. So how hyped are you about fighting his magic? I'm really quite excited. Those guys put together some really impressive stuff. And uh, what I saw, like the Candlelight Gardens stream they did, you know, even with the incompleteness, it looked really good. And, you know, I'm excited for Rainbow Dash in the game, obviously. Yeah, she looks good. Uh, Seriously, she looks good. But there's no Fluttershy, right? Um, They haven't uh, completed they, her yet. Yeah. If she is there, like, wow. Flutter Rage. Well, it's actually, uh, I think the... Uh, it's Angel jumping out and attacking. Mm, yeah, I remember Is that. the uh, in other animal friends attacking while Her Fluttershy? Will be, she'll hug you to death. <laughs> well, that's already uh, that's already Pinky's thing. Really? I, what I think would be really funny, yeah, she has a level, uh, her ultimate attack, level three, is uh, Pink Amina mode. Oh, God. Where, oh. She, where she hugs you for half your health. Reminds me of Suma Gorat's, um ultimate. Uh, the Chaos Dimension. Yeah. Uh, and... It hits for 50% of your health. It's pretty crazy. I, I, I would think that, like, Fluttershy would probably be... She slams the bear. From, uh, <laughs> it's about... Not about time. Uh, Lesson Zero. Oh. On top of you, and then does, like, a little massage. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, Mr. Bear. You feel better. And then you're, you know, half your life is gone. It would be awesome. Like, if you notice the Rainbow Dash um, move list, it looks like Guile's um, Somersault. Rainbow Dash, from what I saw, reminds me a lot of... Well, she has the foot dive, which is, you know, Doom. Yin Yang, Street Fighter, or Doom. Um, but she also has, like, some kind of weird arbitrary flight mechanic. But then she also has the flip kick. But her, her attacks seem really uh, very weak. So it's, like, lots of little little chippy hits as opposed to big solid hits like Applejack. I think she's um, more of a combo player. Like, you rack up huge combos. Kind of yeah, thing. it kind of reminds me of, uh, I think I think it was Chip from Guilty Gear. Mm. Where he was the fast little ninja dude that would hit really, really, really fast, but did, like, no damage at the time. <laughs> I like how, you know, they had really equalized out how a unicorn would fight with an earth pony. Because if you put that in standard, you know, how you would imagine him, it would be like, the unicorn's definitely going to win. But the way they equalized it out is pretty good. Yeah. It's kind of interesting, like, fighting games. Like, some people analyze their fighting style like, oh, this person, let's say Twilight. Twilight has the almost exact same move list like any Ryu, Ken, Goki kind of character and whatnot. And even her hyper is, like, this one... Just a straight beam. And her ultimate. It's, I think, have you played King of Fighters? I have not. Oh. Well, there's this one character called K49. So it's just four nines in a row. And one of her ultimate is to form a force field around himself. And it does damage, like, huge amount. It's, it's something like that. 
But it reminded me of a lot of video games that they played. Well, I mean, obviously the guys that are doing it have definitely played a lot of different fighting games. And, you know, they're, they're, they're pulling parts from each, you know, because, you know, Applejack, she's got her, her stomp move, uh, which I'm trying to remember where that one is from. But, like, her, her charge attack, the, the ropes are kind of like uh, Spencer from Marvel. I think you know. there's a ground stomp move in, oh, my God, I'm talking about King of Fighters again. Ugh. There's one in King of Fighters, and is there any one in Marvels? I don't really remember. No, I don't think so. Huh. Usually it's a double down and insert key, punch or kick. Huh. Who yeah, does that? I, I, I could be wrong. I, I just don't think... I don't remember one. Also, let's see. In like Rarity, it has her various gym attacks. She has the ground wave, kind of like the heat knuckle from uh, King of Fighters. Uh, you got... Obviously, the gym projectiles, the gym rain attack is kind of like a reverse storm, hailstorm. You know, Pinkie Pie's aerial thing is kind of like, uh, well, in this game, Gookie's uh, short Hadouken, multi Hadouken super, you know. I mean, you can draw a lot of comparisons. Yeah, if, if you're in the fighting game world, you, you'll see a lot of similarities. The last fighting game I ever played, I think, was Tekken 4. Tekken 4? That was a long time ago. Huh, that's going to be interesting. So anyway, um, those are my questions. Hope you don't mind geeking about video games. Oh no, that's quite all right. You two sounded like you had a lot of fun. Yeah, well, more or less. So, um, Daniel, you have any more questions? Yeah, just another question, Sandy. How did you come to know about us? Was it through Norman's email or before that somewhere else maybe you've heard of us? Well, you know, one of the things we do each week is we do our five-star iTunes reviews, right? And you guys showed up as a listeners also subscribe to... So it was like, ah, there's a Malaysian one, and there's also a German one, and the United Kingdom, you know. It's cool to see that there are shows that are regional. Well, not really regional, but, you know, the people across the world have set up. And that was how I saw that y'all, because you're in the list. Wow. Awesome. Well, it could be also my email that I sent out. <laughs> well, you also emailed us, and you've also tweeted at us in the past. So it's like, I, I was aware of who you guys were. And Ooh. so it's like, yeah, there's these guys out in Malaysia. They're doing the Pony Podcast. That's really cool. I got another guy I know. He's doing uh, one in uh, Germany called Pony Time. Didn't and you guys the, interview that, those people once, if I remember right? Yeah. It was uh, Garrett and Peridotto. They're also doing Galicon. Oh, awesome. Ah. There are people all over the world. It's yes, really cool. Indeed. Well, I wish people would send us emails. <laughs> Actually, um, just on that note, have you come across a non-English Pony Podcast? I actually think there is a client preferred, client preferred cast, Simon und Philipp. It is a German language My Little Pony podcast. Well, mm-hmm. My Little Pony sounds big in Germany. Let's see, the uh, client preferred cast doesn't seem to be uh, consistent. They're updating. But uh, Pony Time is in German as well. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. I so, remember there's an Italian one. They interviewed um, Will Anderson, if I remember right. And yeah, it's really cool that there's people all over the world that are just like, oh man, I really love this this thing. And, you know, everybody can talk about it to their own community and also across the world. We've got military men downloading it in Afghanistan and Iraq and Saudi Arabia. It's just, that's just how it is, you know? Oh, I have it's to say, world. you guys are pretty awesome to getting that um, coin from a military brony. And military bronies listening to you, wow, I'm so jealous right now. <laughs> Achievement unlocked. <laughs> it, it's really cool, and it's good to hear that, you know, we can entertain people all over the planet. Okay, uh, my next question can be uh, off the record at, uh, at your disposal, because um, I actually want to ask if it's possible if we guest star in Bronyville sometime? Sure. Like, um, maybe even a crossover show? That's pretty doable. Oh, yay. So... Would you want this to be on the record, or...? It can be on the record. It's just... Uh... And actually, we're kind of coming up on the end of our uh, current spate of uh, guests listed. Let's look at my Google Doc. Because the way we do our guests is we organize them about a month and a half, two months at a time. Wow. I um, just arranged mine with every week. Like, do we have a guest this week? Nope. Okay, we don't have a guest for this show. So, let's see. We have, right now we've got, after this week, three dish We have things lined up until... November 3rd. Wow. Awesome. So, yeah, it's just long-term planning. It's kind of like how we do the, uh, you know, we follow the structure, we do long-term planning. 
Ah, all right. I need to look into that too. Yeah. So, do you have any case where your guests said that they can come, say, next week, but during next week they had to cancel because of something? Guests who bail out because of un- unforeseen reasons. Oh, well, whenever that happens, uh, we're just like, hey, insert Equestria Daily and or Derby Hills News personality here. <laughs> Would you like to come on for a show? And they're like, all right, cool. We oh, like having oh, Fee or Cal Payne or Serial or even Seth if he's free. I will it, it, if I eat cereal. He's a cool dude. He's a good bro. He's a good friend. And it's, it's just a matter of asking. Uh, okay. Well, we asked. So yeah. we might be on the show. Yay! Yay! Geek out! And definitely, because once we, we had actually uh, a pretty tight situation, we had to find a guest and we did it within, what, two hours? <laughs> yes, that one. Oh, and it was the guy who owned the, um, the MLP forums. Oh, pretty awesome episode, really. That's how we got to know our good friends in Alicorn Radio. Indeed. So anyway, do you have any more questions? How is podcast culture like in the States? Like, is, is podcasting popular? Uh, podcasting, it's it's regarded as something nerds do. A lot of it. Um, and I'm a nerd, so that's fine with me. A lot of the podcasts don't interact unless they're part of a network. And even then, sometimes they don't. Like, Bernieville has cool relations with some groups and warm relations with others, but we're still kind of a standalone podcast. We're not beholden to any one group and don't have anybody telling us what we can and can't say. Not even Celestia Radio? We're part of Celestia Radio. Our Mm -hmm. show airs on there. We came to them and said, hey, let's collaborate. And they were like, oh, well, sure. And they make no claim to try to uh, control what we say or do. And, uh, they have a very varied uh, slate of shows. Hmm. Some of them are not clean, but most of them are. I mean, it's. I remember. You know. I remember your guest. Who was it? I forgot his name. Oh God, I'm so I'm really bad. But he said that uh, uh, Celeste Radio works um, any way we like. We post the not safe for work shows really late, so that yeah. the little kids won't listen to it. Yeah, that, that would be DJ Shamrock. He's oh, yeah. the guy that runs the station. And he's a cool dude, too. And it's kind of funny. It's like I said, yeah, he, these are all cool guys. Yeah, he's pretty cool. He's pretty cool. I say that a lot. But it's true. You know, I've met a lot of neat people. And, uh, I don't know, when it comes to the podcasting world, we play nice as best we can and try not to step on too many people's toes because... Uh, we don't want to make enemies. On, yeah, don't need to make enemies. Life's too uh, too short oh. to make enemies about My Little Pony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so true. God. Like, of all reasons to fight over ponies. Yeah, yeah. I, think I meant more towards um, consumer listening. Like, not for not, not so much a production, but do people generally listen to podcasts in the US? iTunes is definitely very big. I think that a lot of people do. You know, because there's a podcast for everything nowadays. You know, there's the news ones, there's the fandom ones, there's the TV show ones. We're a TV show and a fandom one. So we fall under that. And it's what people listen to at work. People listen to, uh, you know, because people would listen to the radio. And this is just another form of radio. And it's just having more options. Because here it's difficult because some people here, unfortunately, don't know how to subscribe to a podcast. It's not very well publicized. iTunes just became pretty big in Malaysia, especially with the launch of the new um, Apple series of devices. So unfortunately, a lot of people still don't know how to subscribe to podcasts. How about in the States? Are people more aware about how to get access to podcasts? Yeah, because things like, well, iPods and iPhones are just incredibly uh, common here. And just music players in general, they're, they're very common and fairly inexpensive. So most people have them. And it, it does require a little bit of uh, technological savvy, but it's pretty common. Because like, a lot of like new shows in the US, if you can't listen to them live or watch them, they put out their show as a podcast. Yeah, it's so picking up here as well. And listen. It's so, here as well, but it's not very popular. You know, give it time. You know, it's a new new tech in a new area, and it'll it'll work out. All right. Thank you very much for that. Okay. So anyway, um, these are my last questions. And what was your reaction when we invited you onto our show? I was like, cool. People actually want to interview me. That's great. I don't have a big head about this. Um, I do this for fun, and it, and it's always really nice when people ask to interview me. Because I love to talk about ponies and I love to talk in general. And uh, having other shows have an interest in wanting to talk to me is always fun. So is this your first interview or have you done it before with other shows? Actually, I think this is probably... No, it's not my first. No, it's not my first. But it's pretty close there. Oh. What was your first? 
Um, I think it was it was a show called uh, Rat- Ratty Rough Bronies. Oh, damn. I remember them. Yeah. They're a local podcast to me. And, Ooh. Uh, the, the guys in it are members of my uh, meetup group. Oh, all right. And they're just like, hey, would you come on? I'm like, sure. Because I remember you saying their show on your show once, and that's why I remember it. Awesome. Daniel, why don't you take the last two? All right. So, seeing that Bronyville gets truckloads of fan mail, uh, do you have any tips on how we could probably get some fan mail coming our way because our inbox is rather empty? Well, let's encourage feedback regarding your guests. You can always say, you know, let us know what you think. Send an email to the MBS show at gmail.com, which is your email, and uh, tell people that you want to hear from them. Hopefully, people will like to give their two cents, their experiences as bronies. I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of people in your part of the world. And they can talk about, you know, sh- with their friends and family and uh, stuff like that. It's an angle you can work. Well, we tried um, it, but after 32 episodes, our inbox is pretty, well, not full. <laughs> you know, it, it, emails come and go. Um, I mean, even Bronyville sometimes has slow email weeks. It's just a matter of, is there anything to talk about that week? You know, fandom news is always a big driver. You know, is there something big going on in the community that's good? You know, is there, uh, you know, is there some amazing announcement? You know, oh, did they have the hub say, you know, a date? You know, that kind of stuff will get people talking. Um, okay. Just let people know that you want to have them, you know, share their opinions. And uh, hopefully, if people listen to this, they will know. Yeah, you want your email, please. <laughs> All right, so um, lastly, Chef Sandy, do you have any questions for us here, Malaysian bronies or the MBS show or anything here in general? You know, I'm actually interested to uh, hear about, you know, how it is for a Malaysian brony. But I think uh, we should probably devote some time to that on uh, an episode of Bronyville, don't you think? Ooh, oh, why not? Why not? That's fun, that's fun. So anyway, um, Chef, do you want to pimp out any sites you have? Um. Well, I mean, there's always, you can listen to Bronyville at uh, bronyshow.com, bronyvillepodcast.com. Uh, we always appreciate emails to bronyville at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Chef Sandy. You can follow Apple Cider under the at Bronyville account. Um, you know, check out Equestria Daily, check out Derpy Who's News, you know, read fan fiction on Fim Fiction. Listen to Celestia Radio. You might find something cool. Check it out. There's a lot of creative people in this community, and uh, give it a shot. Listen around. All right, cool. So, moving on to the next topic on the show notes is shoutouts. So, my only shoutout for this week is to you, Chef Sandy. Thank you for coming on our show. It's a great honor to talk to you. Oh, you're welcome. I'm, I had fun. And Daniel, do you have anyone to shout out to? Yes, in particular to um, Saber Spark and Final Draft of Everfree Radio, because this is a public service announcement from the MBS show. There is a virus going around Skype. So if somebody <laughs> sends you a link asking you something about your display picture, it downloads an EXE file, it's a trap. It so is. Thank you, Final Draft. Thank you, Saber Spark, because um, Saber Spark accidentally bounced it to me and then he told me, don't click on it, don't click on it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got it from him as well. I got actually from a number of people on my contact list, so yes. Is this your display picture? No, because my display picture is right there in the top left. <laughs> you can see it. <laughs> oh boy. Well, if somebody were to click it, tell us what what it does. I want to know. I, I, I almost clicked on it because my Facebook display, my Twitter, and my Skype are all different. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, don't don't ever click things like that. It's it's bad news, bad news. Unless you want to know what happens. Curiosity. <laughs> if you don't like having a functional computer. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> and uh, one last shout out to Base Beast JD David Cozeda, our guest from a couple of weeks back. The long way from Equestria Project is coming out tomorrow morning, Malaysian time, six a.m. Get up and listen to it. It is going to be amazing. Or if you're in the US, you don't need to. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay. If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can always contact us at show at gmail.com. And you can reach the show's Twitter page at show. I'm at Norma Sanzo. I'm at St. Pinky, S-T-P-I-N-K-I. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. And also like our Facebook page. I've been Norma Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony. Chef. And I've been Chef Sandy. <laughs> okay, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. 
Adeus. I'm alive inside this nightmare In, in a world behind closed eyes Out of the darkness, watch me run there In, into the silhouette in the sky
I'm luckily one of those people that doesn't get like motion sickness while reading in the car. Oh. Yeah, you, you should try playing Minecraft in the car. It's instant <laughs> motion sickness. I've tried. No comment, man. I haven't done that before. <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I can't believe you used that. Okay. Oh, oh. Wow, that, that derailed really quick. <laughs> No, but you said about motion sickness, and then whenever anyone says motion sickness, I recall that time I was an idiot and I was playing Minecraft in the car. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound like a, a good idea sometimes. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay.